Hi, today we're going to do a beach scene. Um, pretend you're going to Lake Michigan in the summer. We're almost there. And we're going to be learning some different watercolor techniques. One thing we'll be doing is a graduated wash. And this is how you make this color go from dark to light. We're also going to do lifting to make clouds. And we're going to talk about where the horizon line should be. We're going to talk about preserving white for waves. We're going to learn how to paint with a rigger brush. This is a new kind of brush for you to do um, the beach grass. We'll also be talking about blending and painting shadows. We'll be doing glazing or layering of dry washes to build color. And we'll be doing some splattering for texture. So we have a lot to do today, so let's get started. Um, to make this picture, and I've got several examples here that I've done, um, easily framed. Um, so it will fit a pre-cut mat that you can buy like at Michael's or um, Hobby Lobby. We're going to make the in the actual painting an 8x10 painting. So this um, mat is an 8x10, it goes to 11x14. So when you lay it right on there, um, it's, it's just right. And so you can, um, you'll have some extra stuff out on the edges or whatever and that won't matter but if you want to frame it easily and cheaply you can use one of these prefab mats so I thought you might be interested in that okay the colors we'll be using for this painting are in your palette and in the palettes that we're using today um, we've I've put in all the colors that we use for the poppy class which the church bought and then all the colors that we're using for this class, and they're all labeled. There's a couple of empty places. I'm sure we'll be adding more colors if we do another painting. Um, what we're going to do is keep these palettes for the, for the classes. We're not going to send them home with you. And from now on, we're just going to keep the brushes as well. That way, when people come for the classes, we'll actually have the things that we need, and it will be a lot less expensive for the people that take the classes. So, the classes, the paints that we're going to use today are for the sky, we're going to use phthalo blue. That's this one. For the water, we're going to use Prussian blue, and that's this one. For the sand, we'll use a number of paints. We're going to be use, using sepia, raw umber, yellow ochre and then for the grasses we'll use sap green yellow ochre um, burnt umber and also for the sand we'll use some of the rose matter to give it kind of a warm glow the brushes we'll be using today um, if you've brought your number two round brush from a, pre a previous class we'll use that We'll also use a round number six or a round number four from your previous class, and I have more of those. We'll also add this brush today, which is a rigger. It's a number two rigger. It also is called a liner. And then we are going to have a flat brush. So this is a three-quarter inch flat. Quite different than the other brushes. We also have the spray bottle to, to um, get our palette ready and um, activate the paints and water and I ask you to bring an old towel this is the towel I use <laughs> it's really well used and it's just a lot nicer to use this than a piece of paper towel to to dab your brush with so have your towel handy the reason I had you bring a box of Kleenex is because we're going to lay them down and use it as a way to prop up the painting. Okay, because we need the colors to blend on a slant. All right, the other thing we're doing is we have um, 9 by 12, 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton paper, just like we did last time. 
This is a different brand than we used for the first painting class. And to tell you the truth, I don't like it as well, but it's really hard to find Arches paper now, which is what we used last time. For some reason, they're not making it very often. Um, so I got this, and so we'll just have to be kind of more careful with it, um, especially when you're taking the tape off. So we're going to mask out the paper. So if we, if you take your, this is one inch tape, so we want to keep a one inch border at the top and the bottom for, you know, so it'll fit in that mat. So we can put our one inch tape right on the paper and then put another one just to keep it down. We're going to have to, this paper likes to really buckle up, so we're going to have to tape it down all the way around. But we can also use this to make our um, borders the correct size so that we can use that kind of mat. So line up one inch from the bottom with that piece, and then tape it to the board. You'll each have a board to use. And then on the sides, we just want to do a smaller border about um, half the width of the tape or so. Both edges. All right. You can stop, Dick. So our next section is the sky. All right, for this to um, decide where we want the horizon line, we'll be uh, measuring. I think it's just will be. It works pretty well to have the horizon line be about one third down or one third up from the bottom. Um, so what we're going to do is just divide this paper off. We want the horizon line to be level with with the actual paper. If you have your horizon line crooked, your paper, your painting will, will start out totally wrong. So let's measure carefully. You each have a ruler and we're going to, I'm going to go down four and a half inches from the top. Let's make a mark on my tape and four and a half inches down from the top over here. And then across, I'm going to draw a very light line with my straight edge here and my pencil. And that's where the horizon line is going to be. All right. Now we're going to need to wet the paper. Um, we're going to pre-wet just the sky area. So we'll use the wide brush and we're going to just use the clear water and wet right down to this bottom. The bottom edge of our wet area will be the horizon line. Then we're going to let that soak in a little bit. We're going to have the board tilted and then we're going to um, set up our paint for the sky. Okay. So dip your brush in. If it's a brand new brush, you might need to kind of squish it a little bit to get the sizing out of the bristles. And then my brush has been used before and, and today in this blue paint and I can't seem to get it clean so I don't know about that this brush these brushes I bought weren't the most expensive and I guess I can see one reason why they don't really seem to wash out I'm kind of pre-painting the sky here a little bit directions. Let it soak in a little bit. And then I can use my towel to wipe up this excess here. Okay. Now, the paint color that we're using is um, fallow blue. So you can just take your wide brush and wet that little section. We're going to make a puddle here for our sky color. A beautiful color. It's a little um, harsh, so if we want to, and some people 
say to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it. So you can do that if you'd like. Let's add a little ultramarine, stir that together. And then let's add a little bit more water. You can spray or you can keep dipping your brush, but let's have that be a little less dark. And I've given you each a piece of um, scrap watercolor paper today, and I want you to always check your color to see if you like it. Okay? That would be my darkest color. I, it could be darker than that. What do you think? Maybe I'll go in here a little bit more. Okay, so for my first stripe across the top of the page, with this brush I want to get my brush really well loaded. And then I'm just going to start and go across. Get that nice and full up there. You can put a couple layers if you like. Then we're going to dip the brush in water, come back into the paint, dilute that paint more, and then take another stripe. And this time you're going part way into the original stripe. Then you're going back in the water, diluting it some more, doing one more stripe back and forth here. Just pull it down. I don't think I want to... I think we're just going to keep going here. We want the sky to go um, lighter toward the horizon. Oh, that's blending nicely. See, if we have our um, board on a slant like that, you can see it blending. And if you want to, you can take it, see it's coming all in lines, coming vert, um, vertically down. If I wanted to blend that paint a little bit more in the paper, I can go sideways and the gravity will pull it so that it'll be um, a different, you know, it won't have that pattern of lines so much. If that makes sense to you. Now, to make clouds, that's our next thing, and we do it while this is wet. I'm going to take a Kleenex and put it over your finger. We're doing cumulus clouds. What we're looking at is a photograph of the beach, and you can see the cumulus clouds. How they're, they're quite distinct, and they have a puffy edge and kind of a flattened bottom. Um, what we want to do here, which I think looks aesthetically nice, is to have one cloud that's a little larger, and then some other clouds that are a little bit smaller. And while this is still wet, you can take your finger and touch it, and it'll lift it off. Then on your next touch, you move the, pay, the um, Kleenex to a different spot. You know, you can just gob it up and do it with um, jagged edges, or you can use your fingertip. It's really up to you what you want to do, but these cumulus clouds have kind of a flat bottom and they have some areas where they kind of come up and we'll do, whoops, I'm going through my Kleenex. We'll do another one over here. This is fun. I mean, you, you just get to do what you want here. Then if you want to have some cirrus clouds, which are those um, clouds that are more streaked, you can take a like a fold area of your Kleenex and just kind of, <laughs> you know, once you do it, you can't really change it. So it's just it's just a fun experiment. But I think that looks pretty good. Um, if if you work at it harder and you want to get into cloud painting more, you can see that on these clouds there is a base that's a shadow. And there is some darker color. And I don't think we're going to bother with that today. We have a lot to do, and um, that would be like an, an additional step. You see how I have some water um, pooling down here? I'm just going to take a dry brush and pick that up. It could be just a damp brush. We'll just pick that up a minute. OK, our sky is going to stay like that for a little while. And it's wet, so we're going to move to working on sand next because it's um, far away from the wet. We can't do the 
water right now because it would blend all in with the sky. Let's look at some more of the reference photos I have for us. You can see in this one that um, there is uh, beach grass, there's sand, the sand has different colors depending on whether it's around um, the grassy areas and whether there's deep shadows. Um, then here's another one and I guess what I'd like you to see on this one is that um, around the beach grass clumps there's usually some brown beach grass. It's not all green. Here's a nice one that's pretty similar to what we're doing. Um, if there's a path. When you look at this photo, you're like drawn in. There's a um, focal point, which I would say, you know, kind of ends up being the birds in the sky. Your eye is drawn to follow the path um, to the water and then to the sky. And so that's what we're going to try to do with our paintings today. And you can see the different colors of the grasses. There's quite a variety of colors in there. You can see there's a difference between the sky blue and the water blue. Um, that horizon line is very distinct. The sky goes from darker to lighter and the water goes from darker to lighter. Here's another one that has a path. Um, you can see some footprints. They, there are a lot of um, shadows in the footprints. Here's a nice one that shows those cumulus clouds, the difference between the color of the water and the sky, um, the different colors of the sand. There's some nice cumulus clouds there and some white, um, white caps. One more. And that one shows the, the sea oats pretty well. Okay, looks like we're going to have to close this down because I have low battery. <laughs> All right, but you have copies of those on your table, and you can look at them for reference if you'd like. We're not copying them, they're just reference photos. Okay, so to work on our sand, what I've done with these different ones that I've um, done as examples, each one has a little different line for the, for the, so for the sand, for the beach, um, water's edge. So you, you know, you can do that however you want to. I, I think it is a little easier if you take a pencil and just kind of sketch what you are thinking about. Um, a lot for what I like to do with this is have a path that's leading to the water's edge. And as you can see, like in this one, that path is a little lighter colored sand than the sand that's around the grass and at the water's edge. Here's another one where you can see there's like two paths here. Um, so, you know, think where you want your paths to be, where you want your path to go, and, and just um, sketch just a really light line for your um, water's edge, something like that. It doesn't really matter how it is. Then we're going to also have um, an area up front here, which is going to be the foreground with the longer beach grass, because it's closer to us, it's going to be bigger. And then there's going to be another area over here where the beach grass is further away, so it's a little smaller. Okay, so we've got a mid-ground, foreground, and we got the ed water's edge, and then we've got the water. And the focal point then would be at the end of the path, and then if we put some seagulls in the sky, or if you're feeling real creative today, you could try to do a sailboat or an umbrella or just nothing. I think these look really nice without anything. The focal point is the water. Okay, so we got to get the paint ready for our um, sand. And I think um, there are quite a few colors we can use for the sand. Even though sepia is such a dark brown, if you water it down a lot, it becomes a very nice color for sand. So these four on the one edge are the ones that we're going to mostly want to use for sand. So just give them all a good squirt and then pull some of that out into different areas on your palette. 
so that you can get it nice and watered down. Move and your you, shoulder back. And you need quite a bit of each each one. Helps sometimes to kind of empty your brush like that. Give it a good swish. Go to the next color. We're not sure what all we're going to want to use, so we want to have some um, ready. The burnt sienna makes a nice contrast. Put some over there, but we're going to water them down quite a bit. And then the yellow ochre. The yellow ochre will be for some of the beach grass stems, but also for the the blossom at the end. The sand needs to be quite dilute, so I'm going to spray these out so we can. Oh, and the other color that I think is really cool to use is a little bit of the rose matter. Sometimes, especially toward the evening, the um, sand has kind of a pink glow. So we can play with that a little bit. Okay, now everybody can do this differently. <laughs> you can be free, you know, sand is all different colors, but I do think it's a good thing to try out on your paper and see. Mm, let's see, it's a pretty good sand color. But I think what I want to do first, because this is where we're doing glazing, is we're going to do um, most of it with a very light wash first, and then we'll, we'll build areas that we want to be darker. So the, the lightest color we're using is this one. So let's see, where's that? And water that down a little bit more. So I just want to get the first layer down for the sand. see. Now the sand needs to have some texture so we don't have to have it be all beautifully one color. We're going to really actually be having it take on varied shades. If we keep painting while it's still damp, we can keep it pretty smooth. If we let it dry and then try to add to this paint, we're going to get a line. But we're just giving it a basic sandy colored, light sandy colored wash first. And then we will, this will be kind of a path color and we'll add more depth and more texture as we go. Okay, so there. It's going to dry really fast because we did not do a wet um, application first. So now we can start to build on it. I can um, take some of my rows and I think that that looks nice to have a little warmer tone in this area. Since I'm talking about glazes for the sand, um, you really have to have the first layer, every every layer of a glaze dry before you go to the next layer. And I didn't quite have it dry enough before, so I'm gonna just um, make sure this is good and dry before I move on to the next layer. And since you have your papers um, on a board, you can bring your boards um, over to the counter to do your drying.
Okay, that feels better. So we'll go back to the rose matter wash. And I'm going to do this just in this area. Just to give it a little different tone to distinguish this area from the others. Now, so I've got kind of a mark there that I went to. If I wash my brush and then wipe it off and then let me show you that again. Just keep it damp. I can bring, we'll, we'll get to that. I'll show you a better example of blending in a minute. That one didn't show up very well, but. Okay. Um, I think that this this area in the foreground where we're going to have a lot of um, grasses coming up can be toned quite a bit darker because it's toward the toward the foreground of the painting. So I think we'll I'll take some of this darker um, color that I made, and I want to. Bring some of that in over here. Now I don't really want a definite line right there. I want to blend that. So I'm going to go dip in the water, wipe it off, and then I can just blend out that edge. Hopefully you could see it that time. Wipe. And then while that paint is still damp, I can blend that out. See? That was a good demonstration of blending. But we're just going to keep doing that. I'm going to add some darker layer over here because I want my um, path to be like this to the water. Okay? So I'm keeping an open path here, but I want to give it some depth here and here on either side. Let's bring some of that same color over on the other side of the path. Blend it out. I could have a little more, um, since my, I want my path to be lighter going out this way, I can bring in some more depth over here, a little darker area here as well. Now, where all these plants are going to be, it can really be, we can give it kind of a, a base tone of green. So I'm going to spray my sap green, get some of that activated. And I can add that to some of the brown that I have there to give it more of a, just a brownish green color. And fill this in. Get this a little darker. blend. And then over here I can add a little green tone over there as well. Where these 
grasses are going to be growing. Blend it. Okay, you see the path starting to develop? The other thing we can do is make the edge that's going to be next to the water a little deeper, a little darker, and that will help it seem like the wave that's at the edge of the water, the, the last wa the wave that comes laps over the sand is coming on top of the sand. So if we take some darker color, doesn't need to be green. <laughs> Let's do the brown. And bring it along that edge. And I'm going to have to blend it in also. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think the next thing we need to do is um, let this, we're going to get this to dry, and then we can do the splattering and the footprints. After that is done, then we will do the water. And after the water is finished, then we'll do the grasses. And the very final thing we'll do is any other little detail we want to add, if we want to add some seagulls or, or a sailboat. So I'm going to dry now with my hair dryer.